Michael Page. I'm a curriculum supervisor at the Board of Education. And we're here at the fifth annual Ag Day. We have all of our seventh grade students coming today and tomorrow. And what we'll be looking at is all the various technology, as you can see behind me, the combine. Um, we also have tractors um, that, the, that our community uses, uses for uh, our agriculture. We also have aquaculture. We have um, various animals. And I also have Jessica with me today who's going to talk about some of the other aspects of the event today. Jessica, what do the kids get out of this? Yes. So our goal of this uh, day is to really just make the community aware of the agriculture around them. So we have four educational stations that they are rotating through throughout the day. Um, one will be on the technology and equipment that we use in ag, which is here, which you see the combine and the tractor. We also have um, harvest to table section, which will talk about food safety, our vegetable growing, and all of those aspects of ag. Uh, like Michael said, we also have the farm animals. So we see all of our farm animals that are used to produce our food. Um, and other byproducts, so they're learning about that. And then inside here, we also have the aquaculture, um, so they are learning how oysters clean the bay for us. I, 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 I suspect the kids love it. Yes. This is a great day for Queen Anne's County students. It is a yeah. wonderful end for the community. We're yeah. so happy to have the partnership to do this. Oh, yeah, and the, and the, uh, the fairgrounds are great, right? Yes. Perfect venue. It's a great layout, yep. This, Mary, this is a place where people go to the 4-H fair uh, in August. Yes. Yep, so we actually encourage all of these kids that come here today to come back to the Queen Anne's County Fair in August, um, visit with a lot of these volunteers again, um, and kind of see everything put together when the fair comes around. Wait. Hi. Hi. Thank you. My name is John Draper. I'm the agronomic program manager at Y Research. This is their planner from down at Y Research. We plant uh, research plots for this planner. This is how the whole process of growing a crop starts. This, uh, the planter and the tractor that's hooked to it, we put the seed in the ground uh, to get it out of the ground and, and grow the crop. The, the tractor is an auto steer tractor, so it steers itself. There has to be an operator in there. It does not have the ability to see anything or turn itself around, but it does keep the tractor online. We don't do any overlapping. We don't do any uh, skips out in the field. It makes for a much more uniform crop. This is how the whole process starts. Automation has changed everything, right? Yes, it has. Yeah, it's much much lower stress level now. You don't have to worry about steering the tractor. You can pay more attention to what's happening behind the tractor with the planter and so forth. Uh, make sure there's nothing going the wrong going wrong. The, the, the crop is going in the ground correctly and uh, seed placement is very very important. And these are expensive tools, right? Yep, this uh, this planter here is actually a research planter, but we did buy a new production planter about two years ago. It was $110,000. The tractor is about $150,000, and then the steering is about twenty-five. So, you know, you know, rough terms, you're looking at at $300,000. And this is also a very small rig. It's a four-row planter versus most uh, farmers these days are using 16-row planters. This is a 120-horsepower tractor, and most farmers are using 200 to 300-horsepower tractors. So, very cost to uh, put a put a piece of equipment like in this uh, like this in the field is much much higher than what airs oh is. Gosh, do the kids seem to appreciate it? Uh, some of them do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some of them do. <laughs> yeah, there's varying interest, varying degrees of interest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, A lot of technology jobs are available with this job. We, there's a lot of computers, both in the tractor with the steering system, and then even on our new planner. So technicians are very, very important to us. We spend a lot of time talking to tech support. Uh, oh, trying yeah. to keep everything working correctly. Yes. Make my tractor work, please. That's right. Tractor, planter, sprayer, combine, it doesn't matter. They all use the same monitoring system. And, okay. Uh, they all have their own unique problems. That's amazing. Now, would you like to say something? <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. You got to add something, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm Reagan Milby, and I'm an ag technician lead at the Y Research and Education Center, and I'm proud to be here first experience there you go what do you guys do at the center we do uh we're in charge of the agronomic research so we're one of the agricultural agricultural experiment stations for the university of maryland okay. um we have a bunch of uh, researchers that we implement the research for so they come to us with a plan 
They want to find out uh, how fertility reacts with a certain crop. We're doing a lot of research right now on hemp because hemp was recently legalized to grow, so there's not a lot of data out there about how to efficiently grow it. But we, we work with corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, triticale, hemp, uh, a number of different crops, and we're the ones that do the work for the researchers to make sure that their projects get done the way they want them done. There's a whole lot of science. A lot of science. We deal with science every day. Yeah. Excellent. Oyster shells, because these are reforming organisms, so that that individual little oyster um, settling on much larger shell. We also have um, single oysters. So the way that we can do that is we can take the oyster shell, grind it up really fast. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany Wolf Bryant. I am uh, from Morgan State University Patuxent Environmental and Aquatic Research Lab, and I'm also a part of Maryland um, Extension. And we're here for Ag Awareness Day, and we're specifically talking about aquaculture, which we consider agriculture in the water. So here the kids are getting hands-on experience playing with. So we are showing them examples of oyster spat, which is um, individual oysters that are settled on oyster shell, as well as seed oysters, which are individual oysters that will eventually grow up to be sold on the half shell. Where can we learn a, a more about your program? Um, you can go to uh, University of Maryland Extension. Uh, I umd.edu. Oh. I'm Jenny Rhodes. I work for the University of Maryland Extension. I'm a county ag agent uh, here in the county. So my job is to deliver research-based information about agriculture uh, to our county. So today we are at Ag Awareness Day. We have all the seventh graders from the county will come here either today or tomorrow to learn about agriculture. And right now we are in the animal barn. So as you can see, we have a young 4-H'er over here. And he is showing his uh, goats. Can you see? Hey guys. There you go. There we go. Nice. So uh, we, we have a four so we have four eaters here. We have other day uh, students, and they bring their animals, and they're teaching uh, the seventh graders about uh, the animals about their goats or about their sheep. They have displays here. So we have pigs, we have goats, we have uh, sheep, we have beef, uh, we have a dairy cow, uh, we have a horse, uh, no chickens just because of the avian influenza. Uh, this year we were not able uh, to bring chickens out. But the goal of the next two days is for the seventh graders to learn about agriculture in our county, in our state, and then careers, because they're seventh graders. They're getting ready to get ready for high school. So we want them to know um, agriculture is just not being a farmer. There's many of other, you know, they can be in genetics. Uh, we had a drone demonstration this morning. They can certainly work in IT. They can work on tractors. We have a combine and a tractor here, and we're showing all the technology. You know, they, could, they could be a mechanic. There's just so many things that you can do in agriculture. So we really have enjoyed the, the, all the children and the teachers and the chaperones, and we hope that we've taught them a lot about agriculture. The 4-H kids live this stuff, don't they? Oh, they do. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, I was in 4-H. My sons were in 4-H. Uh, my grandchildren children are in 4-H and then they kind of they kind of go to FFA so we've got the FFA students uh, here today so it's just great to see them come out and show you know teach people what their animals and what they're for you know uh, a lot of these will go be on to be bred a lot of them will be harvested and we have beef cows that's where our hamburger comes from we have you know pigs that's where our bacon comes from and that's what we want people to know this is what this is what farmers do this is life this is, we eat it we're part of it every day that's right that's right if you eat if you eat three times a day thank a farmer every time you eat because this is why we have food because of the people here that are working and this is not only made up of myself um, extension uh, so Jessica and Janelle the three of us come together to work to bring this together and then we and of course the Board of Education has been uh, just phenomenal in helping us get this together but we couldn't do it without all the 4-H'ers the FFA, Farm Bureau, Farm Credit, I mean the list, Soil Conservation, the list just goes on and on of all the young people that are helping. Hunter, you want to come over here and introduce yourself? Oh, <laughs> come on. All right, who are you, sir? I'm Hunter Roots. Okay. 
What did you bring today? I brought the goats. I brought the goats. Um, I'm um, gonna. I'm teaching all the kids about the goats. Um, what are you teaching them? I'm teaching them about like their meat goats, like what certain kinds of them are called. And, what we use the stuff for. I've got family time, culture, feed, and straw and hay. Which is, I bet a lot of them don't know the difference between straw and hay, do they? Yeah, that's a, that's a question I asked. Good. Good job. I assume both of you will be back here in August. Will you be here at the fair? What will you be showing at the fair, Hunter? Uh, Goats. Look at the camera. Goats, pigs, and cows. There you go. There you go. He's busy now. He's got his pigs and he's got his goats and he's got his heifer. So. And showing isn't easy, is it? There's a whole yeah. list like, of things. If you don't, if you don't work with them, then you, yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll try to get away from you and not walk and stuff like yeah. that. So he has to work with them every day. Yeah. Good job. I'll let you get back to showing the kids your. So I'm a Slieger. I am a science teacher at Stevens Hill Middle School, and I am very excited to be here at Ag Day. It's great for the kids to come out and see how agriculture is so involved in their daily lives and how it impacts things that they don't even think about. Many of these kids don't know where their food comes from. They don't know where some of these animals even look like and how, they, um, how they're involved in things that we eat on a daily basis. So this is so important for the students to come out and learn so much about agriculture. It must be a fun day for kids and teachers. Yeah, it's very fun for teachers as well. We're also learning some things, some new things, yes. My name is Tyler Huff. Um, I'm here with Winnie. Winnie is a purebred Duroc sow that's about a year old. Uh, she farrowed and had her first litter in January this year, so she's glad to be away from her babies today. Durocs are a... As are the teachers. But if, yeah. <laughs> Durocs are a uh, breed that is all red in color and have a floppy ear to them. Um, Winnie here, she's roughly in that 400 pound range, and she gets bred once a year. Um, it's nice to have her litter in the January or February time frame. And the reason behind that is here in the state of Maryland, most of your county fairs and the state fairs are looking for 4-H pigs that were born in that January, February time frame. So it fits and that's kind of how the industry, at least on the show pig side, fits. For those in a commercial operation, they normally have pigs at a more of a year-round time frame. Um, so Winnie here eats once a day. She eats about eight to ten pounds a day. Um, when she does eat, it's a corn and soybean mixture. Um, and she lives actually when they're sows in this age, they're actually built for the cold. So they're ready. They do better varying up with straw versus pigs. Uh, in the summer, have to go in the mud to get cooled off. Pigs can't sweat. And they're actually very clean, very smart animals. But it's uh, the use for the mud for them is to cool off and uh, stay cool in the summertime. A lot of these kids have probably never seen a pig close up, right? Probably not, yeah. The pigs, pigs are a little less sparse here on the shore. Um, they're more of something that's in the central Maryland type or area. Um, you do have the Langenfelder farm here in Kent County that has that big commercial operation as well. But a lot of kids here, I'm sure, don't see a pig unless they come to the county fair each year. So uh, I'm Daniel King. Um, I'm a senior in high school and um, here at Ag Awareness Day and uh, these are my sheep. They're all uh, year old females. Um, and uh, these are more, the black faced ones are more of a meat breed. Um, the one in the back, the little white one, she's more of like a wool breed. So you can see her wool a little longer. These two here I just sheared. Um, using the New Zealand method, which takes about three to five minutes to do. Um, that's all? Yeah, that's all, yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, they produce about five to seven pounds of wool a year. Okay. Um, how, much or how often do you shear them? Uh, so we shear these once a year. Yeah, once a year. Um, they all give about seven pounds of wool and, uh, yeah. So, I, will you be showing them uh, at the fair this August? Yeah, so uh, these um, had babies and we're going to be showing their lambs this summer at the fair. Uh, these youth here are used for, uh, for um, 
breeding purposes, so we'll take them home, we'll uh, put them in our pasture, and we'll uh, raise them through the summer, and then breed them so they can have lambs next year. We'll see you this summer. Yeah. Abby Gerald, and I am the farm. No. I am the Queen Anne's County Little Miss Farm Bureau. And so I wear my sash because uh, I teach about agriculture. And I teach like just mainly everything about agriculture that like some people don't know. And so Little Miss Farm Bureau, we go around like if, if people ask about agriculture and they have any questions, so I basically answer that with teaching. What are your duties this summer at the fair? Um, I usually go into the sale pictures, and for Queen Anne's County Fair, we we have a parade, and I go through and just kind of like wave and say hi to everyone. And you help out at shows. Yeah, we help out at shows. And you help in the livestock. Yes, we help live in the livestock auction. I'm usually in the pictures. So it's a busy week for you. Yes. Thank you. Jim Barry. I am one of the admins for the Queen Anne's County Extension Office, and we are in one of the animal barns at our Ag Awareness Days for Queen Anne's County. We're actually at the dairy station where me and Elena over here, who's one of our Maryland dairy princesses, we're trying to ingratiate these kids into a little bit of the dairy industry and try to bring some of the dairy process, some of the processes that go from ingesting feed into breeding cows into making the cheeses. We've got it all kind of spanned and covered with our little station here. You're explaining the differences in cheeses, right? Absolutely. So one of the things that I did when I was the student's age was the dairy foods judging competition for FFA. And in this competition, we had to taste and ch pick out different cheeses. And I actually have a couple different selections for the kids to try out today and the adults, whoever wants to try any of these cheeses. I've got six different kinds. And what I do is I go through, I get them to taste. I try to get them to see, is it creamy? Is it a hard cheese? It is, is it a soft cheese? Is there any tang to it? What do you guys think? Can you tell me what it is? And I think that that's going to really help them when they're consuming, when they're going to the grocery store, trying to pick out what they want for different meals, what they can use these different cheeses for, and how the milk that our cows, our dairy cows produce, goes into making a lot of these products. And a lot of them are really finding their favorites. They're really able to tell me, a lot of them are actually able to tell me what kind of cheeses I have on my cheese plate, which is pretty impressive, if you ask me. So, uh, Elaine has been asking a lot of questions you, you that had, involve had, the industry. Dairy questions? Yes. So, my name is Elena Waltemeyer, and I am the Upper Chesapeake Dairy Princess, and I'm here to teach these young, wonderful kids about what involves with dairy and all that comes with it. And we're also bringing awareness to the Maryland Dairy Princess Association, because our pageant is coming up soon in the next few months, and we're trying to recruit these young girls who are part of the dairy community or would like to be a part of the dairy community to become a part of our program so the wonderful kids are spinning our fun wheel and we have tons of questions for each section of our wheel and if they win they get a wonderful dairy prize and that will help encourage them to become part of the dairy program. How long does your, does your reign last? So our reign is actually ending in a few <laughs> short months Demonstration. and we have our next patching coming up in July for the next round of girls to come in. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Is this, is this fun? Yes, it is such a wonderful program and it has brought so many wonderful opportunities for me that I have been able to experience with them. How many times do you do this a year? 
Um, actually, we try to get out as much as our schedule allows us to local fairs, um, obviously any school opportunities, grocery stores, festivals, all these wonderful places, trying to just get the word out anywhere we possibly can. It's a fantastic program. My sister actually went through and was an alternate for the state of Delaware in their Dairy Princess program. And I can tell you some of the actions, some of the propaganda that these girls are allowed to advertise and put out is fantastic. It's one of the best avenues for getting dairy industry information out into the public and into the consumers. So when I found out that I was going to get to work with Elena today, I was pretty psyched. <laughs> now, could you think about website people can go to to learn about yes. both of your programs? For mine personally, um, we actually do have a Maryland Dairy Princess Association site and it gives all the details it takes to become a Maryland Dairy Princess and for the pageant if you're currently interested looking at it for this coming up year because our reigns are starting to end. So the next group of girls are coming in so please look to our site and get information and all of our coordinators info are there to contact and they'd love for you all to reach out. Very good. For our office, if you want to Google University of Maryland Extension, Queen Anne's County, that will take you right to our website page. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at UME Queen Anne's. Now, I see you guys will be here during the fair, too. Hopefully. Yes. Most definitely. <laughs> here we go. That's good, thank you. Alrighty, so my name is Brian Stokes. I'm the agricultural teacher and FFA advisor for the Queen Anne's County FFA and at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, uh, my role in this is, is bringing the FFA members from our chapter to help uh, chaperone and teach and, and advocate for agriculture within uh, Queen Anne's County. Um, it's a great hands-on learning experience for the seventh graders and it gives uh, the FFA students an opportunity to share what they know and, and to be leaders in our community for, for agriculture. Um, it's a group of, uh, you know, this ag agricultural uh, committee day. Um, we meet regularly as a committee and you know discuss every station that the students are going to go to. It gives the students um, you know a, a, a whole well-rounded uh, view and picture of agriculture in a in a you know four-hour field trip. So so uh, I think that's kind of what you're looking for. Yeah. Any other uh, things to add? Yeah, you got a whole range of kids here who have yep. never seen a farm animal yep. or been to a place, yep. and then you have 4-H kids. Yep. Who yep. are so involved. Yep. So it's a it's a great you know day, especially you know for kids that that do not have direct ties to farming, um, and it also gives them you know opens their eyes to careers that are within agriculture, that are within the county even, and gives them opportunity to say, oh well maybe I could go to uh, college or a trade school or, or learn something more and work in the field of agriculture where there is a need for for me. So. Um, do you have a web address to get more involved with uh, the 4-H, FFA? Uh, with the, yeah, so in order to find out more, you can go to FFA.org for the national site, or you can also go to MDFFA.org, uh, and that is the Maryland uh, FFA uh, website to find more information about how agriculture or how FFA benefits uh, high school level students. How did you select seventh grade? Uh, so seventh graders uh, have been chosen uh, because uh, at the elementary level they we were kind of told that they they do some type of uh, ag related uh, study um, and it also the seventh graders they're starting to think about their their high school career path so hopefully they take some of the agricultural programs at Queen Anne's County High School um, but also to open their eyes to other careers as they start planning out their pathways in high school it gives them a chance to oh look I did that at this Ag Day, I saw that drone or I saw those animals and I want to learn more about that and hopefully maybe they pursue a career later, you know, in that in that field. Just walking around, it's it's really nice to see all the kids and how excited they are, especially when they some people have never seen the animals before. Yeah. Do you find that you uh, basically recruit seventh graders for future ag? Exactly. And and it's it's really rewarding, you know, we, we're here, you know, we've been here for the past six years doing this and now I'm getting these seventh graders in my high school agriculture classes, so I'm able to kind of reference back to their their ag awareness day from when they were here. And do you remember seeing the animals? Or do you remember, uh, you know, learning about the, the uh, combine? 
and those are the, the kind of ties that I'm able to bring back in. So I am seeing it come in the kind of fruits of our labor, I'm seeing it come to my classroom. I bet you'll be here every day of the fair come August. Yep, so the Queen Anne's County FFA, we do snow cones at the Queen Anne's County Fair. It's a, it's a big fundraiser for our chapter, and uh, it's all run by the FFA members. Um, so it gives them a chance to kind of try their hand at an agricultural business, uh, learn the struggles and, and the, the triumphs you know, throughout that, that fair week. And it's always you know, fun fair week uh, to see their faces and, and see some of these kids at this field trip at that fair. So. How are you able to recruit um, farmers and people in the business to come to this? Um, so it's you know we we're able to recruit uh, people from our community that they a lot of the agriculture community is, is so willing to give back and and to to reach out and, and educate people about what they do uh, because you know a lot of our, our society is is removed from farming and so um, the best way to to get them to respect and to learn about farming is to uh, show them what we do and 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 to, to express you know all of the the different you know stru struggles that we face and the and the technology and how it helps us and, and so it's uh it's rewarding to see them give back and and i think that's why they do it as well to to, to feel that reward of giving back to the community that that supports them future apprentices future apprentices <laughs> yeah yeah so they there there are opportunities that they can can work you know with these farmers uh i have a lot of uh local farmers and ag, ag personnel that reach Reach out to me to, to try to find jobs and, and look for summer help and you know seasonal help during the harvest. So um, there's, there's opportunities here in the county for the for students to work and and uh, learn about agriculture. Very good. good. Very good. Patty Salem, superintendent for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And I'm Jenny Rhodes. I work for the University of Maryland Extension and the Ag agent here. We're just delighted to have this partnership and be able to provide this opportunity for our students. We have all these stations that have been set up. Over 40 volunteers throughout our community here. Our local farmers here to share their expertise with our students so that our students can have a large variety of opportunities that they can look into and pursue. So it's it's a great partnership and a great opportunity for staff and students to engage. So thank you. This really started like I guess six or seven years ago and I had Janelle was actually my intern working in my office and she had this idea and like oh we're never gonna get the Board of Education to do this. So we contacted Mr. Page and he's like yes we want to do this. Absolutely. That. So from there it has just really grown. We changed, you know, we tried to figure out, you know, we want to make sure we have the right curriculum for the students. So we want to make sure it's all science-based, of course, and what we do with Extension is everything is research, science-based information that we deliver to our community, so it's worked out really well, but it's just not, you know, the Board of Education the, and the Extension, the University of Maryland Extension, it's Farm Bureau, it's Soil Conservation, it's Maryland Grain Producers, I mean, it's all, if you got a picture of the banner out there, I mean, these are all organizations that have come, the commissioners have been very supportive. And, and as I said, the farmers, we, we have equipment out here, yeah. that, you know, a million dollar piece of equipment yes. here and being able to explain what right. that's used for and, and um, how you farm. It's just um, it's again, a great opportunity for our students and, and the teachers to be able to go back and debrief with students um, and to kind of dig further into some of their interests and you know continuing to make the well, program and, and that's why we want to do this because we want if we they can understand I mean here's an opportunity right here we're in aquaculture I mean to get into aquaculture I mean they can be a biologist you know they can be a genetist I mean right. listing so out so many opportunities yeah, so many for opportunities jobs for, right for, for them careers really yeah. it's yeah. a yeah. career for careers that's yeah. right so we're trying to, maybe our next step is doing some apprenticeships and yeah. seeing how we can yeah. you know um, can partner together yeah. to do that yeah. for some of our high school students as they get closer to graduation. Again, thank you so much. It's just awesome. We appreciate it.